Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another deck profile. Today I have a draft box six brew for you guys. Today we're talking about Vegito Harutagarn. So a pretty weird combination of like leader and main deck archetype, but we do actually have a lot to talk about and I will explain all that in the video guys. So if you are new here, please do subscribe, hit that bell, start miss a video. If you want to help the channel out, there are a million ways down in the description to do so. Particularly if you want to go on TCG player using my link in the description and pick up any of the cards you need for this deck or any cards for that matter. Uh, it really does help out a lot guys, especially considering that uh, Dropbox 6 is released this weekend. So that being said, let's get started. So why am I playing this Vegeta leader? Well, we tried a few leaders with this deck. Firstly, we tried blue Hurtigarn because a lot of the stuff says if your leader is green or a Phantom Demon. And of course, the only Phantom Demon leader we have in the game right now is blue Hurtigarn. There were a few problems with blue Hurtigarn. Uh, a few of them, one of which being you play a green Unison and you can't play Dormant Potential Unleashed. That was kind of a big deal, but at first I thought, oh, you can get around that because you can play Dimension Magic. Dimension Magic obviously is an insanely powerful card. Problem with that was you need pretty much all green energy for everything in this deck. Actually, nothing takes blue energy. So when you're trying to use Dimension Magic like that, I would charge like one blue a game and I would never charge any more than that because there wasn't a whole lot of blue in the deck to begin with. And two, it just, it didn't serve the purpose of the deck to charge blue and then try and use Dimension Magic off of that. So then I quickly realized it had to be played mono green. And uh, that was kind of unfortunate because it feels like they kind of missed the mark on making the new green Hurtigarn stuff actually work with the old Hurtigarn stuff. Uh, that was a little bit unfortunate. But anyways, we moved to mono green. Uh, I tried a few leaders. I tried full size power sun Goku, the one that attacks, takes a life, draws a card. And then if your opponent has four or more guys on the board, he gains quad strike and all that nonsense. Um, I didn't really want to play a leader that took life too fast because this deck can actually be aggressive and it's pretty cool how it can do that. But I, I think you really just want to kind of play a mid range game with this and sometimes pivot to aggro and most decks this format, even the control decks, they're going to attack your leader for the most part, unless you're up against like invoker. So with that being the case, I didn't really want a leader that ripped life too, too fast. Uh, and then I was going to try Clash Goku and Dredge Goku. Dredge Goku was actually quite interesting because when you KO your guys, you get to awaken. But the problem with those guys was that you mill your deck out. And it, that gets problematic because you need your Hurtigarns in the deck or hand in order to go up your chain. So milling them was a really big problem in that regard. Uh, Dredge Goku would have been perfect if, uh, I don't know, if there was a similar leader that didn't mill. That would have been really, really good. But unfortunately uh we don't have that so i'm trying out vegeto going all in ssp vegeto and i like it so far the main reason is because the deck is pretty good at keeping your opponent's board clear so you actually get to use this guy's permanent on the backside quite a bit which feels pretty good uh during your turn if your opponent has no battle cards in the battle area this card gets plus 5,000 power and double strike and then auto when he attacks draws one and if there's two or less battle cards in your opponent's battle area this card gets an additional 5,000 power so Basically, because we're playing green, because we're playing uh, a few, several cards that, you know, make sure our opponent's board stays clear, we get to have a really beefy leader, which helps a lot. Also, he's an untapped two leader. I wish, you know, he could attack anything and draw a card. Sometimes that's kind of relevant, but I mean, you know, it's it's an older leader. So what can we expect? Really, I just wanted a green leader that untapped two energy and had some kind of just playable effect on the backside. And I think this is what we have right now. I hope and I think maybe in the future we'll get a green Hurtigarn leader because they're probably going to want to support this stuff some point in the future. But again, a little bit of a missed opportunity that it didn't work out with blue Hurtigarn. But anyways, let's just get into the main deck. So these are your preferred turn one plays. So you really want Hurtigarn Giant Force on turn one. Uh, a lot of times just to give him that extra marker because he can't attack until he has three or fewer markers. Then on turn two, uh, with one of your available energy, you can go into sealed music box or use Tapion to get into your sealed music box. Tapion is an actually insane card because he either produces himself as a free 15k body, not for the turn that you use his effect, but for the next turn. So even like on a turn one where you know you want to be aggressive, let's say against like Sin Shenron or even like Invoker, some type of slower deck, this card actually helps you be very, very aggressive, which is pretty cool. But he also is a play starter for getting your music box. Music box, you play it, you search top seven, and then to activate main, you are pretty much always gonna put a Minosha in play, which we'll get to in a second. One more thing I wanted to say about the deck too, guys. Um, there's a lot of cards you have to play in this deck, so I couldn't really play like a blue-green, hard blue-green variant where I could charge like blue-green energy. That's what I wanted to do at first as well. Uh, and that would have actually helped with the blue Hurtigarn leader and helps with some of the revive in the deck. 
but uh that was another problem with the deck was that it was just too much deck space uh not enough room to kind of fit in techie cards like that i wrote an article earlier this week uh kind of detailing that if you guys want to check it out it's it's talking about how to analyze new strategies in a in a new meta if you guys are interested in checking that out but regardless mono greens working pretty well so again tapion super aggressive or get your play started and then still the music box gets us into our minosha so minosha is the main play starter once you basically are able to get into minosha off of the sealed music box you're going to use your harutagar in unison that we just had on the screen and you're going to use hoy hidden ambition to start popping your battle cards and once they're popped they get you into your next piece of the chain hoy is another good reason uh there's a good a lot of good reasons to play this card actually um one one thing is he's just a one drop draw one he's a good cantrip but besides that he gives you a lot of combo power he gains uh, the plus 5k combo for the battle and he gets to pop your Minoshas and your different Hurrigarns in order to go up your chain. So sometimes you need to pop, you know, multiple battle cards per turn on your side of the field in order to go up to your chain uh, as quickly as possible. That's why you want to combo the Hurrigarn Unison as well as Hoy uh, in the earlier turns. And then once you get to the later parts of the game, generally the Unison is enough just to pop what you need to go into the next thing you need. Um, but that works out pretty well. And then Hurrigarn Phantom Limb. So when this card's KO'd, you can either play a four drop Hurrigarn from the deck or your opponent chooses a card in their hand and discards it so you have the option there uh that was one of the things when i was trying out dredge goku and clash goku is like if you milled you would no longer have herder guards in the deck to play off of this and that actually is somewhat okay when you can make your opponent discard the card off of this effect but um that's only like in hyper late game where they're hopefully you've already you know kind of drowned them out of their resources that's kind of where that comes up more so but anyways next parts of the chain just this might look a little different than what you normally see only because i am playing the colossal malice rudigarn but we'll get to that more towards the end so the four drop phantasmic revival is really good um he comes out when you pop the phantom limbs that we just saw and then you can either pop him to go into phantasmic evolution but most often i usually just uh hard ex evolve onto this guy you can do this turn two where you you know turn one let's say you play your unison turn two you go uh music box into minosha you can use your unison to pop minosha after attacking with it and then you can use your hoy to pop your phantom limbs to go into your four and then you can evolve phantasmic evolution onto your four and that's a really really good aggressive play because you attacked with minosha you attacked with the two little hurdergarns and you're attacking with this big crit guy plus your leader right so that is one way you can be quite aggressive which is really good and then this guy i really like him because he controls the board quite well KOs himself to pop two of your opponent's battle cards. And then when he himself is KO'd, you get to play one of your nine drop Hurdegarns uh, from the deck, which is really strong. So Hurdegarn, the recurring nightmare, he is a unique blocker with revive. And again, unfortunately, we can't really take too much advantage of revive in this deck because you just can't fit a ton of blue green cards in the deck. It, it is a little bit unfortunate. I wanted to play more blue green stuff like the check lands, maybe the uh, Goku Gohan arrival, but uh, you just really can't fit it because you really do need like 30, 35 cards to uh, to make this engine work. So the main thing with this guy is when he blocks, you get to make your opponent discard a card. You actually get to choose it, which is really good. And then if he's in the drop area, you can pop one of your Hurdegarns in play to put him in play, which is definitely really good when you need that big beefy defense and you want to start you know ripping your opponent's hand apart but he is unique so the reason the, the thing about him having unique is why we play colossal malice hurdegarn so he's the really old nine drop and you might think it's a little weird to play him in a non hurdegarn leader but so let me explain why i really like him because when you're you know going through the chain you can go through the chain multiple times a game and in most games i've played i've, I've resolved multiple hurdegarn chains and when your nine drop hurdegarn the recurring nightmare sticks around you can't play another copy of him right because he has the unique so you run into a little bit of a problem there so when i pop the six drop rudigarn i want to go into colossal malice and when colossal malice is played even during the opponent's turn you get to choose a battle card and a card in their hand put them on top of the deck so that offers like a third piece of removal during your opponent's turn which is actually incredible against wide boards like it's really good that way you don't get the auto of you know your leader being a phantom demon and then pitching a card from your hand and using him as a negate which can then replay him and continue to make your opponent lose resources if only we could use that effect which again maybe we'll get a green phantom demon leader who knows but in the meantime can't use it but that's okay just being able to play him off of your six drop and then you know basically pop a third battle card and rip a card out of the opponent's hand is pretty good on its own already and once again the problem is the nine drop hurdegarn recurring nightmare has unique so we need another hurdegarn to be able to play and this guy even barrier is also really nice as well so not bad i like it a lot at three maybe you could play it at two but uh you really don't want to uh run into a situation where you have no more in your deck uh and you don't typically want to play it from your hand i mean you, you'll play it from your hand if you have to but uh generally you want them in your deck and you don't want to run out of copies to play off your six drop because you can resolve the six drop you know two three times per game next up 
just for the you know pretty much non hurricane cards we have four android 18 bionic blitz so you can play this you can play paragus you can play vegeta the lone prince i like this because we're already playing like a resource denial deck and i wanted more ways to do that plus i like the fact that you can use this to defend early unlike uh the vegeta and the paragus where you don't get an effect off of them until you're at four life cocoon to beastly maiden uh this is a follow-up negate you when you play dormant potential unleashed you kind of had to play follow-up negates because you know dormant basically you activate on their first attack and then you want to be able to stop that second attack somehow and you do have your hurdogarn blocker but um you know this could be cocoon so this could be shocking death ball this could be any follow-up negate that kind of just stops the attack i noticed later in the game you don't use too much energy so cocoon so for me just kind of gets the job done and finally guys this is the part where i want to mention that i think this is going to be a pretty cool rogue deck i think this thing could do with some stuff at locals maybe it'll top a regional here and there but uh these are just the cards that unfortunately you can't really fit into the deck because you're playing so many cards for the engine it's like i think i'm i think my engine is 38 harutagarn cards just to pull off the chain and i think there's like you know somewhere between 12 and 14 of you know other essential cards like dormant like super combos like frieza charismatic villain and things like that as for the secret rare i mean you you could slot it in i just generally haven't needed it or wanted it but uh, you definitely could slot it in for a 53rd card but we're already playing 52 in the deck so i don't think you really want to be uh too frivolous with extra deck space but anyways guys hope you guys enjoyed the deck profile the deck is incredibly fun to play does some aggressive things does some mid-rangey control things so uh try it out let me know what you think and i'll see you guys next time